This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. In the preceding lesson, I worked with the healing brush and spot healing brush to remove specific, usually small areas of the image that needed to be corrected. In this case, I was using that to remove spots and discolored areas. You can also use that for simple photo retouching if you want to remove scars or if you want to remove pimples or other blemishes to people's skin. You can even use it if you want to remove someone from their background. The basic idea behind those tools is that they analyze the area that you're sampling from and compare it to the area you're sampling to. And while they may seem magical and wondrous, they aren't the only tools nor techniques you can use. They also won't work in all situations. For example, when I tried to use the healing brush on the area near her left arm, well, technically her right arm, the left arm in the picture, it didn't work very well because both the healing brush and spot healing brush tend to need to analyze the area around the blemish you want to fix. In this case, what that results in is sampling color from her arm and a discolored area that completely destroys the line of her arm. I'm going to zoom in a little bit with Command Plus. For our PC users, you'd press Control Plus, and I'm going to press my space bar to activate my hand tool so I can pan around to the bottom and really take a look at this damaged part of the image. So what I need is a way to take the pixels that are over here in the nice good area and apply them over the outside of her arm. And I need to take the pixels that are over here on her arm and apply them over the scratch and damage that's on the arm itself. Well, we have other ways to do this too. The healing brushes sometimes are a little too smart for their own good. So we have a tool that's not quite as magical, but still extremely powerful. This tool is the clone stamp. The clone stamp is intended to allow you to sample from one area of an image and then apply that sample to another area. In this regard, it's very similar to the way the healing brush works. But when the healing brush can analyze the area you're trying to clone over and perform a color change, this doesn't. This simply takes the pixels that you had in one area and straight copies them to another. For a situation like this, that's often the best choice. You have many of the same options here that you had for the healing brush. I'm going to choose a 19 point brush. That should be large enough to fit. You can adjust the size if you like, either with the slider or with a keyboard shortcut. Remember the left and right bracket keys make a brush larger or smaller. Mode, I'm not going to adjust. I'm going to leave it on normal. But I would like to set my opacity to a lower number. 100% is the default. And what this does at 100% is copy the pixels and applies them completely opaquely. I found that this tends to create an effect with a very harsh edge. So what I do is lower the opacity, 30%, 20%, and it allows me to use it as a blotter and slowly applying new pixels over the damaged area. It gives me more control and allows me to create a more realistic effect. I'm going to disable the aligned setting. What a line does is mostly applicable to when you're using this as a brush when you're clicking and dragging. It controls how the original sample area relates to the movement of the brush. I'm just going to disable it because it's not usually helpful. Instead, I don't use the brush as a brush, I use it as a blotter. Usually, it's not going to be an issue. Now, I'm also going to turn on sample all layers so that I can sample from the background layer and apply it to the fixed image layer. What Sample All Layers does is it literally treats all the layers as if they're all active simultaneously. So when I hold down the Alt key on my keyboard for PC users, that's the Option key for Mac users like myself, and click on an area I want to sample from, even though I have the fixed image layer highlighted, Sample All Layers allows me to sample from that background layer. And all I'm going to do is move my brush over the area I want to repair, and I'm going to click on Release. Now notice that it doesn't completely remove it. So I'm going to click a couple times. And notice each time I do, the damaged area is being filled over slightly. 
This technique of using a lower opacity requires that I click more times, but it does tend to give me an effect that I find I have better control over. I'm gonna press and hold Alt again and sample from an area of the arm. And then I'm gonna go in and simply slowly clone over the damage to the arm. You notice it was a little too much, so I'm gonna undo that. I'm gonna lower the opacity again to about 20% this time. Press return to finish editing the opacity. I'm gonna sample from a newer area, and then I'm gonna lightly apply it. It's a trial and error. It's not perfect. You'll find that if you click too many times, sometimes it becomes really, really edgy. Another way to avoid this harsh edge is to use a soft brush. I'll use a 21 point soft brush. You can notice that the edge is really blurry. That's what makes it soft, like this. I'm gonna make it a little smaller by pressing the left bracket key once or twice. I'm gonna hold down Alt to resample, and then I'm gonna click over the area I wanna apply it to. The soft brush gives me a much softer edge. I run into a problem sometimes with bleeding from one area to another, but it does tend to make a smoother and more realistic effect. So this is how you can remove areas where there's a great deal of color variation. So I can use the same effect to remove this scratch on the arm. It takes as long as it takes. The idea is that you're trying to create a realistic effect, at least that's my assumption in this regard, and you wanna be very careful about overdoing it. You can constantly adjust the area you're sampling from, sample over a lighter area if you need to made an area too dark like this. And it's simply a matter of trial and error. You're not gonna get it right the first time. The more you practice, the better you'll get. Normally you're gonna to wanna to stay with a sample area that closely matches the area you wanna correct. In tone, in color, and in texture in this case, especially for the skin. Not bad. So you can use the clone stamp in areas where it may not be the best idea to use the healing brushes. It's a very similar approach, though it does have its own specific strengths. The ability to set the opacity, for example, is an extremely powerful feature. Remember, normally you're going for a very subtle effect. I'm gonna press Command Option Zero to return my image to 100% view. For our PC users, that would be Control Alt Zero. You can also use the View menu, View, actual pixels. Fit on the screen will enlarge the image to fit fully on the screen, but it may change your zoom above or below 100%. When you really wanna get an idea of the corrections you're making to your image, 100% is the best percentage to view it at. So don't make any decisions about your image, whether it's good or bad, until you view it at 100%. Once again, that's Command Option Zero or Control Alt Zero to zoom to 100% automatically. Not uh, bad, so now you've learned several tools that can help you repair this image. There is a great deal of damage at the top of this image where that tape was applied. To repair those areas, in the next lesson, we're gonna use another technique that I'm familiar with that allows us to fix and repair large areas of an image very quickly.